Welcome GRD 132 Typography, and this isn't an official teaching video, but I just wanted to go over some of the reading assignments that I just posted under announcements in my Warren, just so you have an idea of where to go and what to look at first, since there's like four different things here, and I don't want you to be overwhelmed. So a couple things here, when you go to announcements, you'll see it says, read the brief intro article from Canva. And that's this one, the ultimate guide to understanding typography. And I'll just click on it. The link should open in a new window. I also have the bookmarks under documents and resources. But this is a nice kind of gentle article to start with that's easy to read. It isn't very long. That'll talk about typography, that'll talk about some terminology, basic terminology related to typography. You don't have to go into the golden ratio and stuff like that. Some of these links we'll deal with at a later point, but just some basics that I'll have in here. It's a nice kind of introduction about serifs, sans serifs, and some of the categories of fonts, tracking, letter spacing, things like that, kerning and leading, which we'll talk about in more detail later, but at least you get a little bit of an overview. Once you get to the part about line height and glyphs, you can stop. You don't have to read this cool typography fonts favored by graphic designers. You don't have to get into all this. So that's all you have to read there, but read it and try to absorb as much as you can. That's the first article. And then there's another very good article, a little bit more detailed, a crash course in typography from Jotform. And this is very good too. Now this goes in a lot more detail in the font categories, also the subcategories of fonts, the classifications, the different types of serifs. So it starts off with some anatomy and some terminology like the other ones, but then it goes into the different types of serifs, old style, transitional, and we're not worried about that right now. I just want you to know that they're serif, sans serif, slab serif, script, and decorative. We don't have to get into the subcategories like formal script and casual script. We'll talk about that once we delve into each area of the categories, but I'm just saying that because, you know, when you read about serif typefaces, you'll understand what serifs are and, and their readability and things like that, but you don't have to get caught up in this. Don't feel like you have to memorize all this terminology about old style and transitional and modern and stuff like that. You could read it, you certainly read it and go through it, but don't feel like you have to memorize this stuff. Uh, just kind of go through it and read it about sans serif. Don't feel like you have to memorize grotesque, neo-grotesque, humanist, geometric stuff like that right now. The classifications within sans serif, don't worry about that right now because if you're new to typography, just the five categories is probably enough to get you started right now. It doesn't mean you can't read it, but like I said, you don't have to really focus on it that much. It talks about scripts and then it gets back to some basic terminology, proportional monospace typefaces. It talks about moods, you know, the style of typefaces, which usually has to do with the audience. Uh, which we'll talk about later, but you could certainly read it. Weights and styles, proportion, and then it does get back into anatomy. So it, it gets back into anatomy, and this will be kind of an overview. Again, you don't have to memorize everything, but start getting familiar with the terms. Start reinforcing some of this, because there's a lot of terms, and it can be confusing in the beginning. But if you read through this, it might be a little less intimidating when you start reading the book. So, you know, be familiar with ascenders and descenders and things like that. And some of these terms, some of these terms are all related to one letter. You know, the, the ear, the link, and the loop are all part of a G. And I'm not going to ask every little detail about them, but you should get familiar with using the right term. So you're not using thingies and this thing sticking out. So you could say the leg or the tail or the counter and stuff like that. But you don't have to get too in-depth with it just yet. So this is just kind of an overview, but it's a nice article. So read through this article. It's not very long, but it's a, another good introduction. So that's a crash course in typography. That's the second thing. And the third is your textbook, which is Exploring Typography by Rabinowitz. I have the ISBN number here. And again, if you go into Cengage, and I'm going to go into see it like a student, so I can see it like you, and I'm already signed on here. If you go into your homepage, now you're not going to see all these books like I have here, and you're not going to go into your courses either. If you haven't added this book yet, you'll put in the ISBN here and search it, and then you can add it. I already have it in here, and if I scroll down, this is the book, Exploring Typography, and I'm just going to click on View. So it's just an ebook. This is the way you would read it. I know it's not great always reading things on a computer, but the chapter we're going to focus on is going to be physical attributes of type, not history of type, because we're doing that in the history of graphic design course, and it's kind of a boring way to start out. So I'd rather just learn about physical type to start. So we're going to start with chapter two here, and it's pages 46 through 58. So just go through this, and it's very detailed, and it's actually very good. It has a lot of detail. It has a lot of examples. I know it's a lot of stuff to kind of remember, and, and that's why I actually put a lot of this stuff on a sheet, just so you know the terms. 
because I know they have bold terms here and they have some of these definitions over here, but I put all the terms on a PDF sheet. It's actually a Word document. If you need that, let me know. But just so you know the things that you need to know. But this is actually a very good book. It goes through things nicely. There's some things I wasn't familiar with because I'm not an expert at every aspect of typography. I can identify a lot of fonts, but I don't know all the terms. I don't use those terms all the time, but I'm going to try to since we're taking a typography class. And as you go through here, you'll see some terms that'll vary from resource to resource. Like they'll use a term called angle of stress, and you might see it as axis in another area. So I just want to point that out, but just get familiar with this stuff. This is a very good resource. So if you're going to read through this and try to absorb as much as you can, when you read this stuff, just look at the things and even try to think of things that'll help you remember it. Like the spine is only with an S. That's the only time that, that you'll do that. Um, you don't have to remember all these little different types at the top. You just have to know that's the apex. And the vertex is like a V at the bottom or the bottom of W's at the bottom. That's all you got to know about that. I'm not going to be asking you about all these little things. But you might use these terms when you identify something to differentiate between a Garamond or a Gaudi or something just by the tops of the apex. So you should know that's the apex. I don't know if you have to remember all of these right now. But anyway, there's, there's not a whole lot of pages, but there's a lot of information. Here's a whole bunch of stuff just on the G. I Sometimes I call this the goatee on a G. Just the way sometimes you see something coming down. Sometimes you don't. On sans serifs, a lot of times you won't see anything. And sometimes they'll come down. So they call that the spur on here. I call it the goatee, but we should probably <laughs> probably use the correct term. Same thing with the G. Here's the, the loop and the link and the ear on your G. So some of these are all with one letter. So all this stuff is defined here, but I'll show you another place where it has a lot of great definitions. There's a whole glossary we could look at, but if you go through here, you're going to go through to page, I think like 56. There's shapes of type. This is a little different when you get through here. There's some things talking about the, the brackets on serifs. They're talking about the barbs. Sometimes I just say, oh, well, the little thing's sticking out, but it's nice to use the correct terms for some of these. So these are helpful, especially even for me, because I don't use these correct terms all the time, but now I will, describing the tops of these serifs, the barbs on here, when we look at different kinds of fonts, especially ones that are very similar, but have subtle differences in these characteristics. Also, here it's talking about angle of stress. The other glossary uses the term axis, and that's basically of you know how the thick, thin, parts of the stroke are angled and you'll you'll see pictures of that you'll see you'll see a lot of this here's that the angle if you think about using calligraphy if you ever use calligraphy there's a certain angle you keep a pen at and that's why some of these serif fonts have like a you know there's a fatter area if you're using a flatter pen there's flatter and then when you come around the top it gets thinner and you'll see that with serif fonts serif fonts have this contour they have thick thin areas and this angle is sometimes referred to as the axis they refer to this as the angle of stress just so you know that's the same thing and x heights the x height ratio meaning the large x height compared to the cap like i said sans serif fonts a lot of times will have a higher x height so they're easier to read at smaller sizes so all this stuff a lot of good stuff here and even this is even better not that it's going to be exciting but if you ever heard the term picas and points and all that and you didn't know what it is then make sure you read this because this is a very good i think it's like a page and a half on this but we'll talk about the we'll talk about the terms letting we'll talk about m space and n space and n dash and m dash and all that kind of stuff so you should know this too even if you're into web typography you'll see those terms so at the end they have a section here just about points so it might involve a little math because a point is 1 72nd of an inch just like a pixel is when you're using 72 pixels per inch and a pica is 1 6th of that and we'll talk about that in measuring them and measuring point size we measure point size of fonts we measure point size of lines as well and some of these terms come from old metal letter type. And we'll talk about that as well. And I'll show you some pictures and graphics of that. But anyway, I just want to get you through the reading. So that's all I think you have to read here. I think there's a chapter summary at the end. There's the chapter summary. So go over some of that in review. I might use some of this for quizzes and things like that. But I'm not going to try to be super specific because there's a lot of terminology here. I want you to get the, you know, the, the gist of it, the, the main idea. I, I don't need you to memorize a whole lot of things. But I want you to start to speak a little more authoritatively when it comes to fonts and not using terms like thingies and stuff like that that we tend to do when we don't know the proper terminology so anyway that's the reading in the textbook if you can have access to that and make sure you read that and I will do a video that gives an overview of some of this that pulls some of this together but again I'm just going over the reading right now so anyway back to the announcements and I almost got logged out I did create a PDF so if you click on this
this. It's just a PDF, and if you'd want the Word file, I could give you that. And I just kind of put down all the terms from the chapter in here so we kind of know them. So at least we have these here. I might make a Quizlet at some point of, of these terms so you could kind of practice with it a little bit, but these are the ones that you're going to want to look at. And given that, if you're like, well, you don't have the definitions or anything, there is a glossary here by Fontshop, which is actually very good. If you click here, they have you know some basic things here not everything is here they don't have descenders even though tail technically is part of the descender they have ascenders here cap height x height they have all this stuff here just in this little graphic but if you go down here anything that you need to know so if you needed to know about the you know axis and i'll go down here and look for axis there's apex if I go down further, there's axis, and you can see it's the, like the angle of stress that they were talking about. So this is really nice. If you scroll up, it goes back to here, but they have a whole alphabetical list. So if you ever want to see the definitions, go here. So even if you looked at that other list and you use the definitions from here, that's fine. I'm not going to ask you for the exact definition from one book to the other. I mean, we're talking typography, so they should all be very similar. So I'm not asking you to remember definitions word for word. I just want you to be able to identify things when we do that. I'll provide some exercises where we can review some of this as well. So anyway, that's the Font Shop Glossary. And I do have this bookmarked in Documents and Resources, so it's not just here in the announcements. And then, well, I think that's it. I think that's everything here. So like I said, I am going to record an overview, not this video, but another video that will kind of go over some of this stuff to try and pull it all together a little bit. But this video is just to kind of give you an overview of the reading, just so you know what to read. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Some people get these announcements and they don't even read them. You know, they just look at this and go, oh, wow, look at all this. But make sure you read these announcements and make sure you read these articles. They're very good foundational resources to start with. So we're kind of starting off with anatomy and all this and knowing some terminology as we start to work with type a little bit more. We'll talk about the classifications and start breaking down the type categories a little more as we go. But just to start, so that we can identify type a little bit better, we should know the terminology to identify type. So that's why we're starting with this. All right, good luck. Have at it. Have fun with your reading.